Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. The palm trees swayed gently in the breeze, their slender fronds tracing lazy patterns against an azure sky. White sand stretched as far as the eye could see, blindingly bright under the Caribbean sun. This was paradise found. Jamaica held a special place in Harry's heart. He had visited the island nation many times over the years, drawn back again and again by its natural beauty, rich culture, and warm-hearted people. In the congested hustle of California, it was all too easy to lose sight of what really mattered. But here, with each lap of the gentle waves and call of the songbirds, life's simple pleasures came into sharp focus. It was the perfect place to recharge and find perspective. This particular trip, however, held greater significance than those of the past. Accompanying Harry on his Jamaican sojourn was someone new, someone who had come to mean the world to him. For years, Harry had found solace in the natural serenity of Jamaica. This deep connection to the island's tranquility took on new significance, as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan, attended the premiere of the movie Bob Marley One Love at the Carib Five Theatre in Kingston, Jamaica, on a blissful Tuesday. The surprise appearance of the royal couple added excitement to the event. They took the time to pose for photos and engage with members of Marley's family, demonstrating their support for the film. Walking hand in hand on the red carpet, the couple radiated elegance. Prince Harry looked sharp in a blue suit with a white button down, while Meghan is elegantly styled in a bodysuit and suspected custom skirt from Carolina Herrera, paired with gold accessories, including bold earrings from Jennifer Meyer. She maintains her signature look with a Cartier Love bangle, Lorraine Schwartz pinky ring, and her wedding band. Her choice of clutch is a reworn Jimmy Choo, black and gold J-Box clutch, previously seen in 2018. Joining them at the event were Paramount film chief Brian Robbins and his wife Tracy James. The Marley family, including Ziggy Marley, the eldest son of Bob Marley, were also present and warmly embraced Harry. Additionally, the Prime Minister of Jamaica and his wife, along with other distinguished guests, graced the occasion with their attendance. Bob Marley, One Love, set to hit theaters on February 14th, is a paramount film that pays tribute to the life and music of the iconic Bob Marley, emphasizing his powerful message of love and unity. The movie features Kingsley ben portraying the legendary singer and Lashana Lynch playing his wife, Rita. The film offers a glimpse into intense moments from Marley's life, including an assassination attempt in 1976, highlighting his resilience. It also chronicles his journey to fame and showcases his historic performance at the One Love Peace Concert in 1978, where he aimed to bridge political divides in Jamaica. Described as a celebration of the life and music of an inspirational icon, Bob Marley One Love brings Bob's story of triumph over adversity and the inspiration behind his revolutionary music to the big screen for the first time. Harry has made visits to Jamaica in the past, long before he sparked his romance with Meghan. In 2012, the royal traveled to the island nation for his Diamond Jubilee tour of the Caribbean and was seen dancing with a large crowd to Marley's iconic hit, One Love. This visit to Jamaica holds sentimental value for Prince Harry and Meghan, as they had previously traveled to the Caribbean country together before their engagement. In 2017, they attended the wedding of Harry's friend Tom Skippy in Skip to Lara Hughes Young. Notably, this joint outing follows Prince Harry's recent attendance at the Living Legends of Aviation Awards in Beverly Hills, where he was honored as an inductee. Meghan was unable to join him at the event due to one of their children falling ill. The couple are proud parents of their son, Prince Archie, and daughter, Princess Lilibet. They really had the best time.
Harry and Meghan meeting the Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Holness, and his wife, Juliet. Disclaimer. Everything in this video, and all of my videos, are my opinions based on detailed research that I perform. That said, I would recommend doing your own research before you make up your mind. Thank you. For Prince Harry, participating in public mourning rituals in the days that followed his mother's death was an arduous task. Not only was he trying to cope with his own personal loss, he was required to interact with thousands of grieving strangers. It was a lot to put on a 12-year-old. And while he looked outwardly composed during his public appearances, inside he was numb. He told Oprah in The Me You Can't See, It was like I was outside of my body and just walking along doing what was expected of me, showing one-tenth of the emotion that everybody else was showing, thinking, This is my mom. You never even met her. So profound was his shock and emotional paralysis that he felt nothing even as he shook hands with people who were openly weeping. This left him with a lasting sense of guilt. In an interview with 60 Minutes, Harry recalled, Their hands were wet from wiping their own tears away. One of the strangest parts to it was taking flowers from people and then placing those flowers with the rest of them, as if I was some sort of middle person for their grief. We can understand the immense burden young Prince Harry faced in the wake of his mother's death. To process such a loss while the world watched and suppress his emotions out of duty at such a tender age must have taken incredible strength. Though it served an important purpose then, repressing grief often causes deeper wounds. All a child in that circumstance deserves is time and space to mourn in their own way. The numbness Prince Harry experienced in the immediate aftermath of Princess Diana's death was an understandable response to an unthinkable tragedy. But as the immediate shock of her death receded, Prince Harry continued to bury his emotions. Even though others in the royal family tried to talk to Prince Harry and his brother, Prince William, about their mother's death, he didn't yet have the maturity to articulate his emotions. Harry and I tried to talk as best we could about it, but being so small at that age, it's very difficult to communicate or understand your feelings. Then there was the pressure from the royal family to keep a stiff upper lip and not let any personal trauma interfere with his official duties, something he'd been taught by his father from a very young age. As Harry remembered, My father used to say to me when I was younger, he used to say to both William and I, Well, it was like that for me, so it's going to be like that for you. So rather than facing down his anger and sadness about his mother's death, he pushed it down and simply chose not to talk about it. Suppressing painful feelings seldom leads to healing. We hope in time he's found healthier ways to honor his mother and process his pain. Stop. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.